Good morning. I'm Christina Chavez Nelson, and I will be your worship leader today. Our Reverend Robert Klein will be back next week on June 14th, and the topic will be Congregational Democracy and discussion of our annual congregational meeting. Please sit back and relax. All are welcome. Welcome to our virtual gathering today at First Unitarian Universalist Church of Stockton. We are glad you chose to visit us today online and hope that you will find here what you are seeking. We are a community of individuals holding many different beliefs, coming from many different places, and each progressing on our own journeys of life and faith. We join together in our commitment to care for humanity and to shape a better, healthier, more hopeful world. We promise to accept and encourage all those persons of goodwill who gather here, recognizing that we all continue to grow and learn throughout our lifetimes. We especially welcome and stand with LGBTQIA persons, even as we seek to welcome all persons of every age, ability, status, and shade of skin pigment. We strive to make our community a place of peace and acceptance, love and nurture, even as we challenge ourselves and others to live more faithfully according to the values of Unitarian Universalism. Please enjoy our prelude. Thank you, Bhakti. These are the opening words for the 7th of June. We are grateful to mark time with seasons, to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, or to gather as family to remember our loved ones. <clears throat> In all these seasons, may we give thanks for the breath of life, ever mindful of the fragile nature of existence. May we live fully in each moment. From summer to fall and winter to spring, we gather in mystery and in the bonds of beloved community. May we radiate love both within and beyond these walls this day and all days to come, caring for those we love and for those we have yet to meet by Mary Frances Comer. Chalice Lighting Words for the 7th of June by Lois E. Van Leer. We light this chalice not because we must, but because we may. We light this chalice, not because we have the truth, but because we each come bearing and seeking many truths. We light this chalice in connection across culture, distance, class, and language. We light this chalice that our religion may be a beacon of light, hope, and justice. We light this chalice to kindle our hearts and our minds. Please join us in the opening hymn. Please join Jan in our words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. We believe in love. 
Love is the only doctrine of this church. We believe in truth. The quest for truth is our sacrament. We believe in helping others and service is our prayer. We believe in the sacredness of life, to dwell together in peace, seek knowledge in freedom, serve humanity in fellowship, and cherish the earth and its creatures. This do we covenant, each with the other. It is at this point in our service that if we were in our sanctuary, we would call the children to the carpet for the story for all ages. However, since we're all at home or somewhere that we can get the internet to see this video, please do whatever you can to relax and let your childish impulses play as you listen to the story for all ages. On the Day You Were Born by Deborah Frazier On the eve of your birth, word of your coming passed from animal to animal. The reindeer told the Arctic terns, who told the humpback whales, who told the Pacific salmon, who told the monarch butterflies, who told the green turtles, who told the European eel, who told the busy garden warblers, and the marvelous news migrated worldwide. While you waited in darkness, tiny knees curled to chin, the earth and her creatures with the sun and the moon all moved in their places, each ready to greet you the very first moment of the very first day you arrived. On the day you were born, the round planet Earth turned toward your morning sky, whirling past darkness, spinning the night into light. On the day you were born, gravity's strong pull held you to the Earth with a promise that you would never float away. While deep in space, the burning sun sent up towering flames lighting your sky from dawn until dusk. On the day you were born, the quiet moon glowed and offered to bring a full, bright face each month to your windowsill. While high above the North Pole, Polaris the glittering North Star stood still, shining silver light into your night sky. On the day you were born, the moon pulled on the ocean below, and wave by wave, a rising tide washed the beaches clean for your footprints. While far out at sea, clouds swelled with water drops, sailed to shore on a wind, and rained you a welcome across the earth's green lands. On the day you were born, a forest of tall trees collected the sun's light in their leaves, where, in silent mystery, they made oxygen for you to breathe. While close to your skin and as high as the sky, air rushed in and blew about, invisibly protecting you and all living things on earth. On the day you were born, the earth turned, the moon pulled, the sun flared, and then, with a push, you slipped out of the dark quiet where suddenly you could hear a circle of people singing with voices familiar and clear. 
Welcome to the spinning world, the people sang as they washed your new tiny hands. Welcome to the green earth, the people sang as they wrapped your wet, slippery body. And as they held you close, they whispered into your open, curving ear, We are so glad you've come. It is at this time in our service we celebrate our candles of joy and concern. This first candle is a candle for all those who are protesting inequity, inequality, violence, and hatred. This second candle is for all who are mourning the loss of a loved one, whether to COVID-19, police brutality, disease, illness, old age, accident, whatever the reason, we mourn with you. This third candle is for all who are finding their way through challenge, through contradiction, through hurdles, and through the mountains that life throws in front of our path and asks us to climb over. This fourth candle is for all who have found a reason to smile, to sing, to dance, to laugh. Our virtual hugs go to those who are celebrating anniversaries and promotions, graduations, weddings, and yes, birthdays. And this final candle is for all those things that are so dear to our hearts that are yet not ready to share. We pause now in silence. And now we take a moment of silent meditation and thought. May all that is crowding your heart and your mind, may all that is muddying your soul and your time be eased, be blown away, be filled with the light of love, with hope, with health, and with courage. This is reading one for June 7th by Albert Camus, translated and adapted by Justin O'Brien. Great ideas, it has been said, come into the world as gently as doves. Perhaps then, if we listen attentively, we shall hear amid the uproar of empires and nations, 
a faint flutter of wings, the gentle stirring of life and hope. Some will say that this hope lies in a nation, others in a human being. I believe rather that it is awakened, revived, nourished by millions of solitary individuals whose deeds and works every day negate frontiers and the crudest implications of history. As a result, there shines forth fleetingly the ever-threatened truth that each and every person on the foundation of their own sufferings and joys builds for them all. Dear members, this is the time in our service that we usually have our offertory. Please remember to send in your pledges and any who are watching and members especially if it is it in any way possible for you to contribute additional funds to help the work of this church, they will be greatly appreciated. Please send any offerings to First Unitarian Universalist Church of Stockton, 2737 Pacific Avenue, Stockton, California, 95204. If you have any questions, please email the office at stocktonuu.org. Birth is a loud, messy, complicated business. It is exhausting, painful, and debilitating. It drags out of you every ounce of will that you have and then asks for more. It can feel like a never-ending spiral where time has no meaning and what was hours ago feels like seconds and seconds can feel like eternity. And then, just when you are at the precedence of thinking, nay, saying, I don't think I can do this, you will find a stalwart friend by your side, reminding you that you already are. In the end, the reward is worth every push, every hurt, every breath that you struggle to achieve, you hold in your arms that promise of renewal, that here is another person for whom it will be your privilege to shepherd through the world, the world that is just as loud and messy and complicated, that will exhaust and debilitate you, the world where the pain is so overwhelming that you often think, may say that you cannot do what is expected of you, and yet you will. 
I gave birth to my one and only child on Tuesday, June 5th, 2007 at 3.15 a.m. in the morning. Nathaniel was five weeks premature and it took every fiber of my being to bring him into the world with great assistance. I was surrounded by family, friends, and amazing medical staff at St. Joseph's Hospital. In another time, another place, we would not have survived. I had always wanted children and it just never happened until the miracle of my lovely son. He is now 13. I'm trying to wrap my head around that just as I did on the day of his birth. I have a child? Me? Yes, me. Now, of course, it is, I have a teenager? Me? Yes, me, a teen. He's a quarantine. Q-U-A-R-A-N-T-E-E-N because he's into dorky jokes like that right now. And I'm always into dorky jokes like that. And while it is just the two of us in our little family, we are so often surrounded by family, friends, and the medicine that comes from dedicated educators and from this loving church community. It is a miracle for us to be here. In this time when life itself feels as if we are being pushed and pulled into a new world, we humans are beings of incredible selfishness. Everywhere you turn, there are examples of how we have used our powers of destruction. We've polluted the air, the water, and the land. We've ripped oars from the bowels of the earth and laid waste to the homelands of various creatures. We've hunted animals to extinction and we've harnessed that cruelty against each other in a dazzling array of extremes. Our hands are washed in the blood and pain of all those who came before and of those by whom we live side by side. The seemingly inexhaustible ways in which we seek to torment and harm each other is mind-numbing, heart-wrenching, and soul-destroying. And yet, oh, and yet, we are also beings of incredible creativity and promise like every newborn babe, we reach out for the unknown. We take risks to explore, to innovate, to conceive. We turn our findings into experiments in buildings, dances, songs, and feasts, art, and laws. We plumb the depths of the ocean and soar into the sky. We risk death itself to run into burning buildings, to pull battered bodies from accidents, to repair brokenness with a hammer or a scalpel. We are not merely willing to explore every facet of our own planet because we also seek the stars. The unknown is always calling to us. It pulls us inexorably closer to that time when we will leave this place behind us. Yes, renewal comes at a cost, one we are often not willing to bear. It is the cost of opening ourselves to others with all that that vulnerability entails and asks of us to admit to our faults, to gently ask for forgiveness, to gently forgive ourselves and to commit to forging new miracles of life. The miracles of birth are seen every day, but not just of new life, of new possibilities, the chance to right wrongs centuries in the making. 
the prospect to engage in forming new paths that bring communities together. Not, not just build bridges, but centers in which we can congregate and learn about the beauty that is within us, the beauty that can enrich us all. It is the miracle of all that we can achieve when we are emboldened by love and the will to push past all that is holding us down. The chance to listen. So when that stalwart friend says, yes, you can, you already are, then you will agree and you will follow the miracle that is you. Our second reading, New Levels of Sacred by Caitlin Cotter Coilberg. She starts with a quote from D. Antoinette Foy. Breathe deeply until sweet air extinguishes the burn of fear in your lungs and every breath is a beautiful refusal to become anything less than infinite. I've always found early morning a holy time. Not that I necessarily want to be awake then. Sometimes what is holy is also difficult. And as a new parent, early morning has taken on new levels of sacred. Now I hold my crying son against my chest and he quiets, breathing warm against my neck as I murmur lullabies. That warm breath makes my eyes prickle. In Judaism, my spouse tells me life begins with the first breath. And as I stand there swaying, life in my hands, I find myself thinking about the ancient Greek concept of pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A, breath of life and inspiration of the Latin verb spiro that the internet assures me means both to breathe and to be alive. Should I text one of my Latin teacher friends, I wonder, in the dizzy joy of morning? Probably not now, when it's just me and the first birds and our unhoused neighbor down the block singing in this new day. And I think of when I birthed our baby. Before then, he was a possibility a fetus, an image on an ultrasound, a kick against my insides. With that first cry, first breath, he became a person in the world. When we lost an earlier pregnancy at 12 weeks, it was the possibility, the dream of a baby that we grieved, that we will always grieve. I watch our son's breath too closely sometimes, remembering the fetus that never became a breathing baby. Grief and joy are away in my arms in the early morning light. Rainbow baby we call our newborn, a child born after loss. We knit him rainbow things, draw him rainbow dragons, take photo shoots of him with the first page of Harry Potter, the chapter title clear in the camera of my phone, the boy who lived. In the first part of my labor before the blessed epidural, the sacred does indeed come in many forms. I sang through the pain Song helping me to breathe, breathing in and breathing out, quietly singing. I continue to carry my pain and my joy forward. A prayer. May we carry joy into each new day and practice hope even and especially in the midst of grief and uncertainty. May we have the courage to love again and again and again. And may we love with the fierce determination our world and lives demand. Shalom.
Shalom, Salam, Namaste, Blessed Be, and Amen. Although we cannot hold each other's hands for these closing words and benedictions, know that I hold everyone in this congregation and anyone who is watching in my heart. It does feel odd not to know that we are going to be able to go in to coffee hour. I can't ask someone if they'd like a sweet treat to eat or some nice warm drink to warm their heart. But I do know that whatever you are enduring and enjoying, however you are surviving and thriving, whatever is emboldening you and building you up with the air to breathe, I hope that joy finds you. I hope that music brings you home. I hope that light guides your path and that darkness gentles you into a quiet, relaxing sleep. Wherever you are, however you are, go out in peace, go out in joy, and know that you are loved until we see each other again. In this time of distance worship, we no longer sing our children off to their classes. However, we can sing ourselves and our friends back to their lives as we end this service. As you go, may joy surround you. As you go, go in peace. No, our love is with you always as you go, as you go. Extinguishing the Chalice We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. <laughs>